The word of the day is Parthenogenesis. Hello Tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. Um, today I'd like to do a rehouse on a tarantula and I figured since I'm rehousing it anyway, I might as well do a feature on it since I've never really featured any of my tarantulas. I think the closest I've come to doing that was with my Pecan Bridge Eye, but um, I, you know, I didn't really go that much in depth into it. So I'd like to give, get a little bit more in depth on this particular tarantula. But before I get into that, I do have some new additions. Um, a friend of mine, the one who introduced me into Old World Species, he has scorpions and uh, one of his scorpions gave birth and he told me about it and um, I got really intrigued about it because they are parthenogenic. If you don't know what parthenogenic means or parthenogenesis, it means the ability to, have to reproduce without sex or asexually. They just reproduce spontaneously. So in truth, they are actually making clones of themselves. Um, so uh, I'd like to go ahead and get into that, but um, I'm not really a, a scorpion person. Um, most of the stuff that I keep are tarantulas. And um, you know, it wasn't a thing where I didn't want to get into scorpions. I did like scorpions way back when emperor scorpions were like a dime a dozen. Um, now they're extremely expensive. I think it has something to do with the change in the importation laws or something. But um, you know, I kind of stayed away from scorpions. But I did have a funny experience with the scorpion, um, with some scorpions, in that when I was in the Air Force, um, we had an exercise in, in Egypt. And uh, once we finished setting up our site, I ended up going and searching for critters, which I usually do wherever I go. And I uh, lifted up some corrugated tin that was out there and I ended up finding a couple of scorpions. And I have a picture of myself holding one of those scorpions. And um, you know, back then I was very ignorant that we didn't have the internet like we do this today. And um, I'm holding the scorpion barehanded with a gloved hand underneath it, which is very ignorant of me because I didn't know what species that was. Later on I did some research and looked at what I had and I think what I had was a death stalker scorpion. So that could have been a very bad day for me. Uh, but uh, you know, just live and learn. And, and back then I was really stupid and didn't really think about it. But nowadays I'm a lot more careful because I'm a lot more aware of my mortality. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into these scorpions. Um, I wish I could say it was like a really happy thing, but I'm actually kind of nervous about them because um, they're not, not about the scorpions themselves, but because of the care of the scorpions. I think I may have jumped the gun on these guys. Um, the species here is Tidius stigmurus, and uh, they, they come from Brazil, and they are a relatively hot species. They can envenomate you and, and hurt you pretty bad, but um, you know, they're, they're not deadly or anything like that, at least not to people my age or younger. Um, they, they might be to children, infants, or even uh, the elderly. But um, these guys are very tiny and his scorpion had given birth to a bunch of little babies. And uh, unfortunately, you know, he called me like right when they got off the mom, which is what you're supposed to do after they, they climb off of her. And uh, he's like, hey, they're ready. You want to buy them? And I said, sure. So I went over there and I got them. And uh, within a couple of days, I already lost one. So I'm not too happy about that. But hopefully I can keep the other two alive and I'm trying to make sure that they eat and are well taken care of. Okay, so let me show them to you. So here's my two remaining ones. And um, I did keep the carcass of the little one that I lost. Um, there it is right there, if you can see it. I feel really bad about that because that's a life that I was caring for and my ignorance killed it. 
Um, I don't know, maybe I jumped the gun, maybe I should have waited until they were a little bit older before I took it. But, you know, you live and you learn, and uh, I'm sorry about that for the little scorpion, but, you know, hopefully I can do well with these two that I, that I have left. So like I said, you know, I, I'm not really a scorpion guy, but I think what intrigued me the most about these two, or these, this particular species, is that it is parthenogenic. Um, so he has this female that he keeps in, in, in an enclosure and just out of the blue it has babies, you know, and uh, the, the cool thing is that in the wild the females outnumber the males, so um, they kind of have no choice but to reproduce asexually and that's what they do. They just produce clones of themselves, so technically these are clones. So the interesting thing is that in the pet trade, because they are clones of themselves, pretty much every single one, unless they are wild caught, is going to be a female in the pet trade and they will reproduce parthenogenically. So um, they're kind of a cool species. I would, like, I would love to get these two to that age where they reproduce on their own and uh, that would be an interesting experience for me. So that's why I got them. Like I said, I'm not really all that interested in scorpions, but these guys, I, I, I would love to see that happen. So the species that I would like to feature today is Avicularia avicularia, commonly known as the pink toe tarantula or the Guyana pink toe tarantula. Um, I know they're very common in the trade uh, and they are about a dime a dozen for these guys. They're extremely cheap, but that doesn't mean that they're a bad tarantula to get. Um, they are an excellent tarantula for beginners. They are an arboreal species, um, so if you are a beginner and you don't want to get into terrestrial species, this is the perfect one to get into, at least to get you started. Um, they're very docile as far as tarantulas go, and um, they are somewhat skittish, but not too, too bad. But they're just a good all-around species. Now, some people would argue that they're kind of plain, because they're very dark in color, almost black, and uh, but they have those pretty peak toes that a lot of people like. Um, it makes them kind of cute, you know. It's one of those species that you look at, and you're like, oh, that's actually a really cute species. So um, I'd like to take a look at it. I'm gonna bring it out so you can feature or see it and uh, get a really good look at it. But one of the things that is cool about them is they're not really black. They're actually a uh, almost an aquamarine uh, green color, and um, they their their hairs are kind of iridescent, and then they have their abdomen that has reddish colored hairs on it as well. Now, interesting things about the Avicularia Avicularia is that um, they are a little bit skittish, but they have a tendency not to want to bite. But one of the neat things about them is that when you go to pull them out of an enclosure they do have a tendency to be real stubborn and they'll kind of stay stick to the wall and uh, they stick very well with their hair and you know those little setae on their feet they're almost like geckos in that they can stick very well to the wall and um, they don't want to move from there they just don't want to leave and they start waving their butts around um, their abdomens so a lot of people, I was reading some, doing some research on them, a lot of people think that when they're doing that, that they want to be pet. They're like, oh, how cute, they want to pet them. But that's pretty far from the truth. The truth of the matter is that they don't want to be messed with, but what they're doing is they're, they're rubbing their abdomen around so that you can get urticating hairs on you. Um, they do possess urticating hairs, even though they are an arboreal species. So let me go ahead and get her out so we can get a look at her. Now, they do have a tendency to run and they jump very well. And a weird thing that they do is that they will also squirt feces from their abdomen. So you'll get this little white stream of poop that flies out and shoots out at you. And with quite some distance too, so you might see me get shot with poop today. Wouldn't that be fun? All right, she's being real, real stubborn. Oop, come on. She does not want to come out. Come on, girl. There she goes. Oh, no, no, don't go back. 
back in. Come on. Out you go. Out you go. There we go. Come on. Alright, so let me go ahead and get this camera going. So we get a good look at her. All right, so there you can see the greenish color to her carapace and then the red color to her abdomen. So they really, really are a beautiful species. And like I said, they're pretty skittish. They don't like to be on skin. So whenever they touch skin, they have a tendency to get kind of jumpy. So you see how she's lifting her legs and she doesn't want anything to do with my fingers. So she really doesn't want to climb on me. All right. But you can see on her abdomen there, now that she's got it turned toward the camera, this little part right here, you see where the hairs are different? And that's because that's where those urticating hairs are located. All right, so there she goes. She doesn't, see, she just jumped. <laughs> she does not want to be on me. So as soon as she got on skin, she was like, forget that, I'm out of here. So there she is. And I'm gonna transfer her to her new enclosure. Whoop, she's going under the table. Come on, girl. Now, they hail from Guyana, but they're also located in French Guyana. All right, there's the uh, abdomen thing that I was telling you about. See how she's kind of twisting herself sideways a little bit? Yeah, she wants to rub those urticating hairs on me. And she won't move. She'll just sit there and just wiggle her butt around and let me get those urticating hairs all over me. Anyway, as I was saying, they hail from Guyana and French Guyana, but they're also found in uh, Venezuela and uh, into um, Trinidad, as well as some parts of Brazil. So um, they have a very wide range and um, they're, they're fairly common in South America. In fact, I've read that they are almost as common as say house spiders. They're often found around street lamps, behind toilet tanks and corners of houses and things like that. So imagine having these guys roaming around all over the place instead of our typical house spiders. Um, frankly, I think that would be pretty cool, but I don't know how you would feel about it or how other people would feel about having a larger spider. Um, they probably max out at about five inches. Um, when they're young, they have, a t they have a different color than this. They're a little bit dark, but they tend to have a brownish abdomen with a little bit of banding to it. And uh, females, of course, will live longer than males, I believe 10 years or maybe older than that. And uh, males uh, generally only live to be maybe, um, I think, a little over a year. Um, I had two males that I got as spiderlings and they, they um, matured very, very fast. So um, a, a, a way that you can tell whether you have a male or a female, um, if you buy one and it tends to molt very frequently and grow very fast, then more than likely you have a male because it's going to mature really, really fast. Another thing, when they do reach maturity, their palps will change. Um, they will no longer have the little pink toes on their palps. Their palps will actually will have the, the embolus on it that um, they use to carry their sperm sac around and they will um, of course use that for breeding. So they will become sexually dimorphic at maturity just like any other tarantula does. All right, so let's go ahead and get her put in her new enclosure. Now, they are a very fun species. Like I said, they're docile. They rarely bite, but they do jump. They are flinchy. They make me flinch just when they jump and so on. And she's just climbing all over my camera here. Come on. Come on. All right. 
Yeah, they do not like skin at all. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this over here and kind of coax her down into her new enclosure and let her go down in there on her own. There we go. Now, as far as humidity is concerned, um, they recommend about 70% humidity, 75% humidity. And, uh, you know, the key here with these guys is ventilation. Ventilation is important with them. Um, if you don't have proper ventilation, then they will develop diseases and so on, and they will die on you. Um, this guy, this little girl here, uh, actually belonged to my son, and I rescued it from her, from him, because he bought it. You know, he was young, and uh, he wanted it at first, and then after a while, he lost interest in it, and he wasn't really paying much attention to it. She's been in her enclosure. She had it. He had it in one of those uh, critter carriers and her enclosure has been bone dry before and he hadn't given her water. So that was one of the reasons why I took over care for her was because he was neglecting her. But even with all, even with all that neglect, she still did just fine. Once I took over, you know, I, I gave her plenty of water. I make sure that she has plenty of water to drink. I keep a, um, a, a drinking dish in there, a little water dish in there for her. And she'll, you know, visit it every now and then. When I first took her from him, or yeah, when I first took her from him, um, she <laughs> didn't have much water. So she went down there and drank quite a bit until she got what she needed. But after that, you know, I just keep a dish in there. I missed it occasionally just, just, just to keep moisture up in there. But ventilation is the key here for this species. So, like I said, excellent beginner species, docile, the, the most you have to worry about is them trying to run and jump off of you. She doesn't get held much, which is probably why she tends to be so skittish, but they will get used to being handled if you do handle them. Um, it's not recommended. Um, they do jump. They have a tendency to jump pretty far and uh, not hurt themselves. So, you know, you, you might find them climbing on you and then jumping from your hand to your chest and so on. So if that doesn't freak you out, then, you know, you're able to deal with the species. Rarely, rarely have I ever heard anybody getting bitten by, by a uh, pink toad. I've never even seen a threat or even the slightest indication that it was going to bite. So like I said, it's an excellent species for a beginner. Um, not an ugly species, you know, it's not something that you would look at and say, oh, it's just a black spider with pink toes. No, they do have color to them. And a lot of people tend to overlook that, you know, even though it is a common species, awesome to get started with. You know, you can pay 12 bucks for a spiderling or less. Um, I, I bought some spiderlings, you know, and they cost me probably about 10 bucks a piece. So, you know, it's, you don't spend a whole lot of money on them. It's a good way to get started. It's a good way to learn, especially if you're dealing with an arboreal species, because this is going to get your foot in the door to other, a little bit more exotic species. So like I said, awesome beginner species. So that's my video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. One last thing, um, the holidays are here. We just had Thanksgiving and uh, you know, Christmas is coming up real quick. So guess what I want for Christmas? Tarantulas. Um, I've been squirreling away my money and hopefully my kids will give me some money as a gift and uh, maybe I'll be putting in an order here real soon for some tarantulas. Um, I've been looking at different species and I'm, I'm getting really excited about the possibility of getting some of these. Um, I, one of the species that I've been really considering is the uh, Monocentropus balfouri, which is known as the um, Socotra Island blue, ba blue baboon, which looks really, really cool. They're a beautiful, beautiful species. Um, I think one of the most attractive things to me is that they can be kept communally and I would really like to try that. Sure does save a lot of space in keeping them. You don't have to have a separate enclosure for each one. So that's something that's definitely top on my list. Um, another species that I was looking at is the, um, is the uh, Har Harpactera um, pulcropes, which is also known as the golden blue leg baboon. Um, again, another baboon species. Um, I don't have any baboons, so um, I would really like to get into some. And that one is, of course, another very attractive species. Um, other than that, I really don't know. So if you have any suggestions that you want to throw out there for me, maybe I'll consider them and maybe I'll feature that on a video 
um, coming up. I do know that um, Fear Not Tarantulas was selling some of the um, Socotra Island baboons and uh, they sold out really, really fast. It seemed like they, they're, they're very popular because of the fact that you can keep them communally and they're beautiful species. Um, they had a five for 250 deal going on and it, it lasted maybe about two days and it was gone. But there are some other websites that I'm looking at that still have them and at rel relatively reasonable prices. It looks like the prices are going down on those. Um, maybe because they breed so easily in communal situations. So who knows? I don't know. Um, but I'd like to find out. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's something to look forward to. So hopefully next time you'll be seeing an unboxing video. Until then, keep loving them tarantulas.